What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at all things networking within uh, within Linux. Again, I'm running CentOS version 9. Uh, you might be watching this video a year from now. That would be CentOS version 10 or 11, whatever version they may come up to. So things may be a little bit different. So what we're going to do, as usual, is we're going to spend some time in the UI, show you what this looks like. If you install a different uh, user interface on your version of Linux, you know things may be in a little bit of a different place, but they're generally the same concept, right? The, the, the usability, the idea of what you're doing is the same. You just gotta find where it is. Um, but then we'll spend most of our time in the CLI and I'll be showing you a lot of different networking commands and things that you'll, you'll probably wanna know. So in this version of Linux, in order to see the networking configuration in the UI, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click this button. Now this is a solid button, so it doesn't matter which one of these individual icons we click, it's a solid button. That's where we get all of our, all of our options from. Now, to view our networking settings, there's two options. We can click Wired Connected, or we can click Settings. If you click Wired Connected and then Wired Settings versus Settings, it really doesn't matter. It brings you to the same place. So if I click Wired Settings, it brings me here. If I do the same button again and I click Settings, it brings me here. So it's the same option. Now, I can, I can turn on and off the networking connection if I want to here. I'm obviously not gonna do that, but in order to view the settings, we're gonna click on this gear wheel that's gonna pop up a window that shows us our IP address information, default gateway, DNS servers, all that kind of stuff. And then again, I can turn this on and off and I have some few options I can check here. Um, here's where I can set the identity of my network card. Um, this is generally something that, you know, you, generally we don't change this, but if you want to, you absolutely can. If you have OCD and you wanna make sure that your network cards are in a, a, in a um, consistent numerical order, let's say you have three or four because they're on different networks or something like that, um, you know, they're, they're gonna be numbered a certain way within Linux. This is the default numbering system within this particular operating system, ENS192. If I had another card, that might be ENS 193, 194, you get the idea. But I may, I may just wanna say ENS 100 or something. So you can change that if you want to. You'll just have to restart uh, the, the services or restart the, the operating system in order to have things, things catch up. So the IPv4 tab, this is just like going through Windows, guys. So you can select automatic or manual for your IP address. If I, if I wanna keep a, a DHCP address, but I wanna also have manual DNS entries, I can hit the slider here, and then you know I can put in uh, Google's DNS servers and hit apply. The last option here is for .1x, and so, in this version of Linux, if I'm authenticating my users against something like ICE, I'm doing .1x on the network, <clears throat> I can, uh, I can set that up here so that when users log into my Linux OS, they're authenticated against Active Directory or whatever radius server I want, and then you know they come back and I let them on the network. So from a from a UI perspective, it's it's actually pretty nice. It's pretty clean. It's it's very easy. Um, the CLI is a little bit more complicated because there's a little bit more. Uh, there's a lot more commands that uh, that you're going to have to know. So let's pivot over there and let's see if we can. Let's see if we can learn to do some. So let's go to 10.99.9.25. You can see here that's the uh, that's the the number of the box here. So the just just so you know, if you're ever watching my videos, I try to name my machines uh, something consistent to where I know the address. So in this case, the the address is 10.99.9.25. So we're going to go ahead and log into it. Let me bring this in here. We'll say admin. Type in my password. <clears throat> and so let's. Let's drag that out a little bigger. Okay, so because of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing, if I change anything, I don't wanna run into any problems with my, my privilege, so I'm just gonna go ahead and escalate it. So we're gonna say sudo, uh, sudo su, we'll upgrade, uh, up, escalate our privilege, and we're good to go. We're essentially root access now. So I was showing you the IP address configurations, kind of where we left off, right, where you can look at the different IP settings within your operating system. So how do you do that from a CLI? So one thing that you're always gonna realize is that in Linux, there are commands that are gonna be older. Some of them are gonna be depreciated. Some of them are older, but they still exist. And you can see more data with a newer command. You might Google how to see this <clears throat> in one operating system. It'll show you one command. You, know, you Google it again and there's a newer command. So the, the commands I show you right now in a year or two years or 10 years from now may be depreciated, they may be new ones. And so just be aware of that. Um, and by the way, anybody watching this video, if there are newer commands at the time of you're watching this or there are better ways, you know, list them in the comments, right? Keep people updated. So IP address show is one command that you can use to just see what, number two, two things. You can, you can see what the identity of the card is. You can see the name. So you can see here the name of this card is, you know, ENS192. 
and you can see the actual IP address of this interface. So if, if we were by default, if this OS was set to a manual configuration, you know, this would obviously be some type of, of address, it would be zeros all the way across the board. The other thing I want to point out to you here is you'll notice that there's no subnet mask. You have to use the CIDR in this version of Linux. In other versions, you may not have to. You may just be able to enter the subnet mask, like 255, 255, 2550. In this version, you have to use the CIDR, and in most versions, you have to convert the subnet mask to the CIDR. If you're not used to subnetting, that's okay. That's no big deal. There's a bazillion and one uh, subnet calculators out there. Go out, enter in the IP address, the subnet mask. It'll tell you what the CIDR is, and then you'll enter it when you, when you want to put in an address, so it's not a big deal. One of the things you'll notice though is that there's no there's no output data here, right? It doesn't show me the configuration, doesn't give me any of the options, doesn't give me any statistics on the interface. It just tells me the address and that's basically it. So there's another command that we can use to actually see uh, some more data around the the, uh, the network card and that's ifconfig. So again, just very similar to Windows where you would type ipconfig. Um, this is going to be IF config. The difference is, is that when I hit enter, you're going to see some statistics around the actual interface. So you're looking at uh, received packets, you're looking at received errors, you're looking at transmitted packets, transmitted errors, you're seeing the byte sizes or, or how many total bytes you've sent, uh, you know, and we're translating that to megs. So it's, it's nice to be able to see some stats around the actual network traffic that this interface is sending. So that's great for troubleshooting, right? Because if somebody says, hey, I can't reach the web server, you log into it, it's a Linux machine, and you're like, okay, <clears throat> is there anything wrong with the network card? You know, you can type ifconfig and just right off the bat, are we having collisions? Are we having drops? You know, what's going on with this particular interface so that, you know, you, you can have some idea. Now, what if you're in a scenario where you just want to take a look at the configuration, make sure that things are right? So the next phase of this is like, okay, you know, I want to make sure that everything is configured right. For that, we're going to use NMCLI, and if I do a dash dash help, you're going to be able to, to see all of the different options that you're going to use. So for me, what I'm going to do is I want to understand the device, right? So I need to see the device data. So I'm going to do NMCLI device show, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, when I do this, what happens is, um, this is going to print out for me a, a listing of all of the different network cards that I have. Not only is it going to print out all the network cards, but it's going to print out all the individual information. So I can see uh, the address, the gateway, I can see the routing, because maybe somebody's tweaked a route and maybe people, maybe somebody, just like you can in Windows, maybe somebody's gone onto this server and said, okay, for that network traffic, send it to a different default gateway, and now routing is all messed up. <clears throat> so I can see some of that data. Maybe there's a, a domain name lookup, maybe there's a DNS problem. So you can see all that. Now if I hit the up arrow once and I type ENS192, so if I wanna look at that one specific device, I can, or, or that specific network card, I can just add that network card ID after uh, after the NMCLI device show command. So this is basically your, your show commands, right? Like if you're used to a Cisco switch or you're used to anything like that, these are your show commands, right? Um, you know, your show runs, all that kind of stuff. You're, you're narrowing down what the configuration is. But there's more things that you may want to look at. Again, I'm trying to combine troubleshooting and, and configuration in, in the same video to make it shorter. And so, you know, in this case, okay, you know, we have somebody that's reported that, uh, that maybe something's not working, maybe they're having some issues. So far, the network card looks to be configured properly. So far, we don't see any, you know, any errors, we don't see anything like that. Let's just see if we can do a, a simple ping. <clears throat> so let's say ping 10.99.9.1. Let's make sure that this box can get out to the gateway, and it can. So ping works the same way that it does in everything else, but you'll notice something. If you're used to Windows, I did not do a minus T at the end of my ping command and I'm still running consistent pings. In Linux, this is the default, where it's always going to run a consistent ping no matter what. You just press Control-C, and you'll get out of it. So I know sometimes you're like, oh, you know, how do I get out of this? So, so that's really all you have to do. You don't ever have to do a minus T. You don't have to worry about it, which is one thing I personally really like about it. You can just do, you know, ping your address and, and move on with life. Now, what if I want to see some additional data around this uh, this machine? What if I'm, I'm like, well, is Apache even running? You know, what's going on? Again, from a networking perspective, we'll look at system services and running packages and things like that in another video. But in this case, we're just looking at networking stuff. So what do I do now? Well, there's two commands you can use to look at your open networking connections and your open sockets. 
The depreciated one is Netstat. Now, this is something that I, I believe Windows actually had it. It's been a long time since I've done this kind of stuff in Windows, actually. I've kind of migrated out of it. But anyway, um, but so this is one command that you can use to see all of your open, your open uh, connections, your open TCP connections and what's listening. The, the problem with Netstat is that it is depreciated. It, it doesn't really have a lot of data and the SS command is replacing it. The SS command shows you your open sockets. So I'm going to hit enter and you're going to see a little bit difference here. I'm going to, I'm going to just going to scroll up because I want you to see the different tabs. The SS command does give you a lot more options. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see the actual state of the connection. You're going to see the received versus the send traffic. You're going to see the, the, um, the package or the service that's responsible for listening to that. If there is one, you're going to see the port that we're listening on as well as the peer address, meaning the, the, the port that that traffic is coming from. So if we do have a connection, you're going to be able to see that. If I scroll down here, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let me scroll all the way down to the bottom. In fact, let me bring in my windows command prompt here. Obviously I'm recording this video on a windows machine. So we're going to say IP config. <clears throat> if I scroll up, you're going to see that my address is 10.99.9.4 and you're going to notice that we have a connection right here. So what essentially this server is telling me is, OK, you have a TCP connection at your protocol. This connection is established. You know, so far, you know, we've sent 64, uh, 64 bits of data. Here's the address of, of the listening machine, which is which is the Linux machine. So 10.99.9.25. It's SSH. So that's the protocol. That's what's listening to it. Um, and then here's the the peer address, right? So this is my address, 10.99.9.4, and here's the port that I'm coming from. Now, this is a really long list, by the way. This is totally outside of networking. This is just a, a quick tip. Um, this is a really long list for you to be able to sort through. What if I know that this person who's reporting an, an error or reporting some kind of timeout or reporting some issue coming into my web server, and I know their address, right? I've already gone through the, the help desk ticket and I figured out what their address is. What I can do is is I can say, okay, I want the SS command. I want to see if there's any connections, but I'm going to hit the shift key and I'm going to hit the key right above the enter key on my keyboard. And it's going to give me this vertical line. It's, it's essentially a pipe. And I'm going to use the grep command. And what that does is that basically screen scrapes. It looks at all the output and it searches for whatever I'm going to list after it. So if I already know that the user, the problem child that I'm looking for, their address is 10.99.9.4, I'm going to say, look, I want the SS output. I want to see all the open connections, all the open sockets, but I want you to specifically show me the one for that address. And you'll notice that in the output, that address is red. So now I've filtered out all of the noise. I filtered out everything else. And I'm just looking at that established connection to see if it's even there. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you here. And again, this is a disclaimer. It's, it's aside from networking, but it's going to be able to help you. It's a tip that's going to be able to help you sort through a lot of this information. This is just a lab and I have a bazillion connections. Imagine a production web server that just is, is out there in the public world, right? Um, if I type CCP, I want you to notice how TCP is in capitals. We clearly have an established connection here with my machine. I'm clearly SSH to it. That's how we're doing this video. But if I hit enter here, you'll notice that it comes up empty because in Linux, it's case sensitive. If something is, is displayed in capitals and I look for it in lowercase, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not going to come up. Sometimes it will. You may hit the unicorn. I've had that happen before where it comes up anyway, but most of the time it's going to be case sensitive. So just get yourself in the habit of typing things in case sensitive, okay, in the proper case. A lot of times that's why I like just highlighting what I'm looking for by double clicking, right clicking it and putting it in the spot because then I can't make an error. So again, just it is case sensitive. So We've looked at all the different open connections. We've, we've looked at um, our own connection SSH back and forth. Speaking of SSH, one thing that I also wanna show you is how do we now test? So let's just say that I'm on a server, I'm on a Linux server that I'm troubleshooting something. I wanna see if I'm able to go to another server or maybe I need to move laterally and I need to go to another server to grab something that I need and I, I wanna test something out. Maybe I wanna to go to another server and then test my connection back, right? So maybe I wanna SSH into another Linux server and then maybe I wanna jump back. So let's do that. So I have another Linux server, uh, it's 10.99.9.24. So let's go ahead and let's connect to that. The first thing that we do when we're gonna enter in that SSH command is we're gonna say admin, we're gonna say at, followed by the address. Now in my case here, I'm using the IP address because I don't have a DNS entries for these guys, but if you had a DNS entry, you could use that. You could use the FQDN here and it would work. But generally speaking, 
especially if I'm troubleshooting, I never use the FQDN, I never use a DNS name unless I'm troubleshooting DNS because I want to actually test IP traffic. So we're going to hit enter. It's going to say, hey, do you want to accept this, this encryption key, this, this SSH key? We're going to say yes. We're going to enter the password. And if I typed it correctly, which I clearly didn't, now we're on the other Linux server. Now, in theory, I should be able to jump back. So we'll say 10.99.9.25. This may kick me out. It's going to say, do you want to accept this? We're going to say yes. I'm going to enter in my password. And now I'm kind of back where I began. If I say exit here, it's interesting. Watch this because it's a triple SSH connection, right? From the desktop I'm recording this video from, I've SSH'd into uh, the CentOS box that's .25. From there, I've SSH'd into the box that's uh, 24, and then I've come back. So we'll just hit exit here, and we're back in 25 where, where we belong. So you can jump SSH connections that way, but again, the, the real thing that I wanted you to pay attention to was the syntax of how to SSH in, which is right here. So SSH, your username, followed by the at symbol, and then followed by the IP address. So how do we make some changes? Maybe we've identified some type of networking problem. Oh, by the way, there's one thing that I forgot to show you. It just hit me. Um, if I'm if I'm troubleshooting those network connections, and I said, okay, well, I can SSH in. That's working. Um, you know, we're 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 able to do this. Before I get to actually testing SSH or testing web traffic, this is probably one command that I would enter: um, ss and then hyphen tuln. The reason why I would do that is because it shows me all of the open connections. So again, if I'm troubleshooting SSH, if I'm troubleshooting somebody not able to connect, it'll give me what ports and protocols we're actually listening on. So for a web connection, if somebody says I can't bring up the web server and I go here and look at it, it may not be open, we may not be listening. Now I know what I need to troubleshoot. For some reason, the server's no longer listening for that service. Maybe the service is just off and I can go from there. But again, we'll do that in another video. So anyway. So I've identified that maybe there's uh, maybe there's a problem with the DHCP server. Maybe there's a problem with with our IP configuration that's being that's being given to us automatically, and maybe we want to change that to manually. This would be the same thing as if you didn't have a DHCP server and you were setting up the server for the first time and you needed to enter this information manually. NMCLI is the command that you're going to use to do all of this stuff. So we already kind of looked in this. So again, if I do NMCLI device, NMCLI device show, and we'll say ENS 192, this is our existing configuration. So we're going to leave this up because what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this to manual, but I'm going to use the same information so that we essentially don't kick ourselves out. So we're going to say NMCLI. If I could type correctly. Come on, JP. And we're going to say connection. Now, each time I type this, what you're gonna what you're gonna notice is that I'm I'm hitting the tab key on my keyboard again. If you're new to Linux, this is one quick thing. Cisco switches. If you're learning your CCNA or something like that, following the other course I'm building, um, really cool. You can just go ahead and you, for example, I have one network card ENS. If I type ENS and hit the tab key, it automatically does the rest for me. Notice how if I do IP, it doesn't. If I'm hitting the tab key, it, it does nothing. And the reason is is because well, which one do you want? These are all of the diff different options of, of what I have if I hit the tab key. And so it, it doesn't know which option I want. However, if you're forgetting what option and you hit the tab key, you'll notice what's happening here. It's saying, hey, by the way, which of these are you looking for? Now, in, in Linux, I can't change the network card, at least in this version, you can't change the option from automatic, meaning DHCP to manual, until you enter all of the things that you, that you need. So in this case, we're gonna do IPv4, we're gonna do dot address, and now we're gonna change the address. So we're gonna say 10 dot, actually, you know what, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me show this again, because I'm showing you the commands, but again, I'm, I'm messing up. So we're gonna say NMCLI, um, connection, modify, ENS192, and we're gonna say IPv4 dot address. Now I'm gonna enter this address here. We're just going to enter the same exact address. We're going to double click, right click, boom, done. Next thing we're going to do is, you know, it really doesn't matter what 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 um, what the uh, what the what order you do this in. So next we're going to do gateway. <clears throat> so now we're under the gateway. That's going to be ten. I can just right click again here. So the gateway is here. So we're going to enter the gateway. Next thing what we're going to want to do is the DNS. So we'll just back this out again. We'll just say DNS again. DN hit the keyboard or hit the uh, the tab key. Uh, now, for our for our sake here, I'm just going to add it, add one DNS server. I don't really, I'm not really worried about adding multiple DNS servers because it doesn't really matter to me. Now, the last thing that we're going to do though is we're going to change this from automatic to manual. So I'm going to say nm 
CLI connection, modify, ENS, oops, modify, ENS 192. Now, here's what we're going to do, IPv4, and instead of doing the, in fact, let me hit the tab key again. Instead of doing the, um, instead of doing an address, we're going to want this one right here, the method, because the method is what's going to allow us to pick whether we want automatic or not. So let me just come here. Space, tab key again. Uh, by the way, I'm hitting the tab key twice, and you'll see that we have auto, we have link local, we have manual. This is the one that essentially we want. And so once I hit enter here, now we'll say NMCLI device show, and we'll say ENS 192. You can see that we've changed. So we, we've, we've modified some of this, essentially not all of this. Um, we can refresh the network card now, but essentially what we've done here is we've converted this from automatic to manual. Now we've manually entered in the, the, the address, we've manually changed what we need to change, and now we can be off and running. We can restart the services, restart the server, and we can rock on. So guys, listen, there's a lot more to this than I put in this video. This is already 20 minutes long. I don't want to plague you with a long video. This is already way too long for me. But um, but I really hope you guys enjoy this. I really hope you guys will mess around with this, and I really, help, I really hope that this helped you in dealing with some of the different networking things that you need to within a Linux operating system. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.